Once upon a time, in the faraway kingdom of Gulag Groig, the spring had lasted too far into the summer, and no crops could grow. Old men murmured that the fairy had returned and were taking revenge upon mankind. Everyone knew if nothing happened soon, most families would go hungry over winter. And winter hunger meant death, plain and simple. On their farm, Athami and his twin sister Apollo had the same fears, except they did not believe in the fairy, no matter how much the dear old Dodki had told them they were real. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. In walked a small, child-sized man with sky-blue skin, sea-foam green hair, lavender eyes, pointed ears, and bird's wings. Burra, he said. My name is Emme, and your grandfather told me to deliver the book to you after he was dead. So, here you go. And he tossed them a tiny paperback book. They read the title, and they were shocked to find it said, Blue Eggs and Bacon. No! exclaimed Athami. It cannot be! The holy book of the fairy doesn't exist any more than you do, M.A. With that, suddenly his face grew longer. He began to grow hairier. Just like that, he had been transformed into a dog. No! exclaimed Apollo. What have you done, Mr. M.A.? What have you done? I did nothing, M.A. said. The book did it. It can't stand doubters. Or peanut butter. Either one. What can we do to put him back to normal, asked Apollo. Only the human king, high king Shu has the power to undo the fairy magic once it is bestowed upon a human, other than that specific fairy. And the book will never take it back. All right, then, Apollo said with determination. We'll go to the High King and get his help. Don't I get any say in this? asked Athami. What? screamed Apollo. But you're a dog. You shouldn't be able to talk. I am not a dog. Absolutely nothing happened. Wait. I am a dog. God's high and low. I think I'm going to cry. And with that, Athme began to bark and whine in such a way that they immediately interpreted it as weeping. All righty then, that settles it. We're off to see the wizard, exclaimed Apollo with gusto. King, M.A. corrected. The High King Shu, Apollo restated. Immediately, they set out. When it was almost nighttime, they realized they had forgotten to grab any food or camping gear. M.A. grumbled about not being fed, then randomly pointed in a direction, told them to go that way, and then he disappeared. They had nothing better to do, so they went the way the fairy had pointed. Soon they saw the light of a fire and smelled food cooking. When they walked into camp, one of the two men leaped up with a roar, drew his sword, and began to fight wildly with whatever entered his reach. Two trees and nine bushes lost their lives on that dark and rainy night. Suddenly the other man threw a sticky liquid upon the berserker, and he immediately calmed. Pardon, ma'am? he said with a thick accent. This is our prince, Oroi, son of our king, Shu, and his dearest of wives, Queen Aya. He very often loses control of his inner rages, and only Greek yogurt possesses various magical properties to calm him. I am his faithful cook, Depneu, and you all. I am Apollo, and this is my brother, Athami. Apollo gestured first to herself, then towards the dog. Depneo looked at Apollo as though she had just eaten wild garlic and forgotten to brush her teeth. Then he sighed and said, Announcing Apollo and her brother Athame, your most eye royal niece. I don't see any brother, remarked Prince Ori. Oh, that would be me, said Athame. And that set the prince off into another frenzy. Another tree and six more bushes were slain beneath his merciless onslaught. When Depne went to throw the magical Greek yogurt on his master, Ohrai spun around and put his sword straight through Depneu's stomach. I'm slain! shouted Depneu, and he collapsed right into his pot of beef bourguignon. So Apollo sighed, pulled out the holy book of the fairy, and read the first line. My name is Shaken, and I really like blue eggs and bacon. With those words, Depneu leapt back to life. The twins that are no twins, exclaimed Prince Ahrai. Will you help me kill the evil fairy king Satun? 
The druid said I could not achieve it without the twins that are no twins, they who play with life, death, and cooking. If I cannot kill Satun, the entire land of Gulad Groig will die. My brother was turned into a dog, said Apollo, and we were told that only your father, High King Shu, can free him from the enchantment. If we help you, will you see that your father changes Athme back into a human? Prince Ahrai agreed it right away, and they all enjoyed the beef bourguignon that Depneu had prepared. The next morning, they were getting ready to set out when Emme popped up out of nowhere. Follow me, Emme said, and I will lead you to your second task. Therefore, they followed him over the river and through the woods until they arrived at his grandmother's house. She was a kindly old fairy named Ahla, who looked li just like Emme, except she was old, wizened, and had no wings. Emme explained that if they answered her questions, she would send them to the fairy realm. She told Ahrai that she would ask him one question, Apollo another, and the dogman a final question. To Ahrai she asked, what walks on four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and would fall and not be able to get back up at dusk? Ahra immediately answered, a fat noble. Ahla nodded. Then she asked Apala, what is the capital of Czechoslovakia? Apala thought, well, a while, then answered, see. Si. Ahla nodded once again. Finally, she turned to Athemi and asked, what clothes all trees? He immediately replied, Bark! Ahla's eyes narrowed. What is the feel of desert sand against your skin? Again, Athame answered right away, Ruff! Ahla looked even more suspicious. What lies above all lords' heads as they sleep? Another time, Athame had the answer ready, Roof! Ahla looked about ready to scream, Who is the greatest baseball player of all time? Athame rolled his dog eyes. DiMaggio! Ahla sighed with relief, snapped her fingers, and they were in the fairy realm.